and you know, for some good reason, but, but it funnels us into a certain way of looking at policy. Right? Development, you know, this push for development is very, very, um, you know, it, it, yeah, it affects how we understand policy or the, the goals of policy. Um, so it makes it limited. So there are certain kinds of alternatives that I would like to look at. So an intersectional approach, and here it is. Right? Things we talked about, a few more. Language, geographic location, history, right? immigration status. So all of those things would be examples of an intersectional approach, looking at these different things and how they come together to create an experience of people in whatever policy is affecting them. So, can I ask you, when you are looking at your, um, basically you're doing a policy analysis, most of you, to a certain extent? Yeah, I think so. To a certain extent, right? I mean, it's hard not to, in some way, go back to policy or go forward to policy. Um, any of these intersections? Or have you been taking into account? Yeah. For example? Like uh, cultural uh, difference, like probably in the organization that I, uh, I'm, I'm doing my research on, there might be some uh, cultural difference that affects the performance of some workers even though on the same field but they can they could perform differently in terms of probably uh, how they uh, I mean care about the their working environment and stuff okay. Now, is there anybody that thinks, wow, I haven't looked at something here or outside of this, these ideas that would be relevant, that might be relevant? You just haven't thought about it, but, for example? Mm. Yeah, for example, like uh, gender, I'm starting thinking about that. How would that be related? Very quickly, how would you, how would your research be taken into account gender as a factor that might be? That in participatory framing, probably there's like different understanding between men and women of, of the plot development. Okay. All right, interesting. Anybody else? All right, so let's look a little bit more at intersectionality. It asserts that people are often disadvantaged by multiple sources of oppression. Right? So if you're poor, if you're disabled, if you're a woman in most places in the world, right? all of these different things. If you're, you know, I mean, coming from a country especially that, that are not American, they have a lot of race issues. But also Canada, there's obviously issues with race and you know, so, um, you know, there are definitely these kinds of multiple sources of oppression, and it's a very, very big, um, hot topic in terms of uh, government. Everybody knows Trudeau? Guy with the nice, nice hair, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, smart guy. Yeah, smart guy. Yeah, smart guy. But he, he, when he first came in in 2016, 20, 2015, 
he had his cabinet was 50% women. And somebody said, well, why was that so important to you? And he said, well, because it's 2015. I was like, it's modern. It's the modern age. And so we talk about, you know, these kinds of ideas of, of equality and amongst gender or race or ethnicity or that. But often it, it's something that's very, it's seen as very hard to put into place or it just doesn't get put into place. So uh, the woman who kind of coined this idea as intersectionality is Crenshaw. She's a lawyer um, and she came up with that kind of idea and she was looking at an actual legal case in which in the American system uh, a woman was suing a company because she was not hired. And her argument was that she was not hired because she was a black woman. And the defense, the company's defense was they hire blacks and they hire women, therefore she doesn't have a case. This woman came up with the analysis well, and that was the actual woman who made the complaint. She said, but they hire black men. They don't hire black women, they hire black men. And when they hire women, they hire white women. So where does that leave black women? And so that was her case. And so with that, you know, she, she came up with this idea of how these multiple sources of oppression work together. And even in the States, the legal system in the 80s, not so long ago, could not recognize how those different identities or sources of, of potential oppression came together. So really, really interesting and, and kind of gave us one of those epiphanies, right, in theory. Um, and she, she has a bunch of stuff on YouTube, if you're interested. It's very, very interesting. Um, so the key concepts is, it's a metaphor, a prism, a way to look at, for example, policy or research or oppression. Right? So it's, it's not a, a theory per se, it's an approach. Okay? Mm -hmm. It's a long history, and of course, identity has these overlapping selves, right? And um, 